everyone it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in today's video I am making a drawstring bag and yes you might think oh my goodness there she is again with a drawstring bag and yes I have kept the design very very simple but there is something very special about this drawstring bag it's magic as you can see there are four drawstrings on this bag if I pull the pink ones, it closes, of course, because that's what it usually does. But if I pull the blue ones, it opens. <gasps> Did you see that? So <laughs> you pull the pink ones and it closes. You pull the blue ones and it opens. I mean, honestly, it's pure magic, I tell you. It's pure magic. I am going to show you in this video how to make this drawstring bag. So let's get started. So what do you need for this project? I am using King Cole Cotton Soft. It's a DK 100% cotton. And this one is Dusky. This one is fudge and this one is midnight. I mean, obviously any color goes. Um, have a look at the cottons on our website. They are just so lovely to work with. I do really love these uh, cottons for projects like this. So it's a DK yarn. It's meant for a four millimeter hook, but as usual, I have to use a three and a half. So use the hook that you usually use for this type of thickness of yarn. Then, of course, you need your scissors and a darning needle. I used a sharp one because you have to go into the drawstring. So that's quite handy to have a sharp one then. And I have these decorative beads. That's what I used to, um, you know, to put at the end of my drawstrings just to hide the connections. But, yeah, I wanted to decorate them. You don't have to decorate them. You can put the connections inside. But I just, yeah, something or something else. It doesn't matter what you put there. So let's get started. So let's get started with making the base of our bag. I'm going to make a slip knot. Insert my hook. I'm using my three and a half as usual for DK. And then I'm going to chain for one, two, three and four. If you want to, you can also use a magic circle. Then I insert into the first chain and I do a slip stitch to close the circle and now I've made a tiny little circle. Into this circle I'm going to place eight single crochets. So I'm going to chain one. This is just our turning chain so to speak and then I'm going to do single crochets until I have eight V's. Well, at least until I have seven V's. And then I go under that first V here that we did of the stitch. So disregarding the chain one. And then I do my slip stitch and that will then make sure I have eight V's going around the outside of my work. One, two, three, four, five, six six because that's the chain seven two four six seven go under the seventh one and you do a slip stitch and that is your eighth v then you do a chain and we are going to be placing in the second round of a flat circle we are going to be placing two single crochets in each stitch so we go from 8 to 16 so a single crochet in that very first one and you add another one to it there we go and so you go round the whole little circle that you made placing two single crochets in each V so I've just made it to the last stitch. I am going to put my single crochet in there, 
then you skip the little chain that we did to get started then you go under the next v here so counting back 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and my 16th there we go okay so now we are on to round three in round three we are going to do three stitches for our repeat so i have done my chain one this is just going to be disregarded for now and our repeat of three stitches is going to be the following one stitch in the first stitch two stitches in the next and that makes three see in the third round so one and then two one two i will see you at the end of the round and i've just made it to the end of the round and here i have to place my one and here i have to place my two but of course if i do my first one and i've got my first v from there then i'm going to skip the chain that we've just done to do the turning you know to, to go up which we disregarded and i'm going to go under the next one and i'm going to do a slip stitch so this slip stitch will sort of act as our last v over that little chain that we did because otherwise if we do two single crochets in there we will have too many stitches so now for round four so in round three we have now created 24 stitches so now on to round four and again we will do a chain to get started then our ratio of increase will be the following so in the first stitch and the first one is there you put one in the next stitch you put one then in the next stitch you put two so the increase ratio this time is one one two and of course that makes four stitches for your fourth round so this is what you repeat one in the first stitch one in the second stitch two in the third stitch now if you wanted to you could make this bag bigger or smaller just adjust your base accordingly so if you do less rounds your bag will be smaller if you do more rounds your bag will be bigger so here i am at the end of my round go under this v and i do a slip stitch there we go so this was the fourth round we are going to do a fifth round so chain one into the first stitch for one single crochet in the next stitch one single crochet in the next stitch one single crochet so that's three in a row then in the fourth stitch you do two single crochets and that makes five stitches so the repeat this time is one 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 two there we go see and off we go again doing this round so i've just made it to the last stitch i'm going to put my single crochet in there then skip the little chain go under the next v and i do my slip stitch so we now have 40 stitches so now chain one into the next stitch for one single crochet into the next one one as well another one there as well and another one there so now we've done four single crochets on their own and then in the fifth stitch we will do two single crochets so we are now in the sixth round one two three four five six and our repeat is six stitches over five stitches so one two three four five six okay there we go one two three four and now five and number six goes in with number five there we go so this is how you continue your round
last stitch of the round where I have to put my two single crochets, put in one, skipping the chain, go under the V and close your round. So there we go, I now have 48 stitches. <laughs> So now we're going to start the sides and so you're going to chain one, tip the work towards you and you're going to look at the V's here. Can you see them? So this is the front loop, this is the back loop. So you're going to be picking up the back loop but also the third loop. So let me just point out to you which is the third loop and that is this strand here. The strand that's lying horizontally when you're looking at it like this. So I'm going to be inserting into the back loop. So this is picking up the back loop. And then here you also have to make sure you pick up this third loop. And you do your single crochet. This will ensure that your bag has a nice edge. And if you were to just pick up the back loop and you do your stitch, look what happens. Can you see you've got a hole? And here that did not happen because it's all attached because we have that third loop into there. So I'm going to undo this, go back into that back loop and go and find and I need a bit of help with my nail there to get the third loop. Now, the thing is, if you ha you have got an, a certain angle and you will be able to get into it, but because these are single crochets that we're working with, it's a little bit more difficult to get into that. See, it's easier now. So once you know what you're doing and you're sort of tipping the work towards you all the time, you will be able to do this quite easily. Now, the thing is, it's only one row and we do it so the bag looks a little bit nicer. Now, before you start working on the sides, you can make this bag bigger or smaller if you want to, but you have to remember that you have to have a number of stitches that's even, that you can divide by two and that is still even because we need that for the boxes later on. I'm going to continue doing my first round of my side and I will see you when I get to the end here. So I'm just doing my last one. There we go. This is the last stitch with that chain coming out of. So I'm just going to skip that one, go under the V there and do your slip stitch. So as you can see, it's still lying flat. Um, soon it will stand up though because we'll do more and more rows and uh, we are no longer doing increases so you will notice that well actually it's not that flat it, it it is curling up so that's good so now we are going to do chain one and we do a single crochet in every stitch around so like I said no more increases and we are just going to keep on doing chain one one single crochet in each stitch. When you get to the end of the row here, you skip this one, slip stitch under that one, chain one, and off you go again. I will see you when your bag is tall enough for your liking. So I have done about 24 rounds of single crochet here and I'm thinking that it's a good hide for me to put things in but still to be able to get them out. So now we are going to make a row of boxes. So we need these of course for the drawstrings. So we're going to chain three. So the first two chains are for the height of the double crochet. Then the next chain is for skipping the next stitch. So we skip this stitch and we go into the next V to make our double crochet. See, and there's our first box made. So then we are going to chain one, skip one 
into the next stitch for a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, into the next double crochet. And this is, of course, how you are going to continue all along your round. So I started with 48 stitches and now I'm making boxes over two stitches. So this will give me 24 boxes. So you must make sure that you have an even number of boxes. So I'm just doing my last box. So I'm doing my chain, skip this stitch. And then of course here we've got this chain coming out of the next stitch. So that counts as our double crochet. And then we go under the third chain because that's our stitch that we need to go under or in, <laughs> whichever way is easiest there. Okay, now it's important that you have an even number of boxes. So make sure you count them and make sure you have them. If you need to, um, you might want to skip an extra stitch somewhere just to make sure that you have the amount of boxes that you need. So an even number. So now we are going to work um, half double crochets at the top in rounds and we are going to be increasing so we want a nice sort of you know ruffled top so i've just chained two and in each box i am going to place three half double crochets like so and this already will be too many stitches so it will start to ruffle up and then we'll do another round where we will be putting more stitches on top of that. So that will create our nice edge. When you're at the end of the round, I'm just going to skip the chain two, go under that V here and do a slip stitch. And then I'm going to do a chain two. And so we've placed three half double crochets in each chain space. So I'm going to put one in the first stitch, two in the second stitch and one in the first stitch. So that will give us an increase of stitches, but not too many. And it will just ruffle up nicely. So it you know looks still lovely and dainty. So one, then you do two. And then you do one. Look there, see it's coming out. And when you have it all together, it'll be a nice ruffle. So when you get to here, you do a slip stitch and then it's time to cut off the yarn and sew in all the ends for the bag because then we will get started on our drawstrings. Now for this chain, I took a length of cotton, which went from fingertip to fingertip with outstretched arms, so about a meter and a half. Then I doubled that, so about three meters. And then you take the middle, the little loop, you insert your hook and you go towards the working yarn and you just start chaining. This will give you a little loop at the end, which we will use later on to attach the drawstring. Now, when you've made the whole drawstring, it will be a lot shorter, of course, but this will be just about the length that we need. So if you take your bag, you need to be able to go round the top of your bag where your holes are of course and you need to have some left over so depending on how big your bag is you need to make sure you have that so you need to make four drawstrings so two long ones like this and two shorter ones so for the shorter ones I took about a meter and I doubled it and that's okay, and I made them the same way. 
So I'm just leaving the ends like this. So just pulling a big loop like so and the same here as well because we're now going to thread it into our bag and so that's easiest to thread them and then we'll finish them off of course while they're in the bag. I'm going to take my hook and I'm just going to go in and out. Let me see where the seam is. So about here I'm going to make a seam. So this will be one side. So I'm going to go in, out, in, out, in, out and so on as many boxes as I can. Yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to put the loop around the hook. And then I'm going to carefully try <laughs> to pull it through like this. I normally do this sort of by hand. You can just fiddle with it and, um, you know, pull it through with your nails. But I thought maybe it would be an idea to try and do it like this so then you pull it through so this is the one end so that's where this end is going to keep coming out of and now I'm just going to make sure I continue from here on of course so this one needs to go in here see this is how I usually do it putting it through one at a time I end up with these two coming out of a whole heat each and that is perfect. So like I said, if your bag is open, you should have some left over here and that's a perfect amount there. So that's fine. Okay. Now we're going to put in the other long one and that has to go the opposite way. So this one here will have to go over this one and behind this one. So you just need to think about it. And again, it's going to be a little bit fiddly, but yes, it'll be worth it. <laughs> Pull that through there. See, so it, got, it runs the opposite way. So this is where we started with our opposite one. This is going to be the middle. So we have to find the outside here where it's going to come out. So just keep on weaving it. And of course the same on the other side. course just count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and so here is my middle so you've got to make sure that you do this until you meet the other side opposite from where we have the other strand coming out so there we go. So we've got the two next to each other here. They're not even. So if you hold it like this, you can pull, pull this one and then you'll just have to manipulate it. So it goes in further on that one. See, that's longer. So a little bit more just to make sure everything is into place nicely. See, now they're the same length. OK, so now Yes, we can close it and it looks cute when it's closed. So I'm happy about that. But of course, we haven't added the magic trick yet. So we're going to here finish these off and I'm going to put a bead onto the end here. So just 
pull that onto there there we go and reinsert your hook into the loop yeah there we go and now i'm going to pick up that loop there as well and i'm going to do a chain and maybe just another one just to secure it there we go and we pull it through so now we can in fact look pull the bead over that and look nobody can see where you've attached that of course you've got it so in the ends but we can do that into the chain so that shouldn't be a problem and so we do the same thing on this side there we go so now for the magic opening drawstrings what are we going to do so we've got these short ones here i am simply going to put them around this post here so you put that around there and finish it off the same way as we did with this so i've got more beads here and same way here I mean, so simple. There we go. And look, so I shall demonstrate it before I actually finish it so you can see it. So you close it by pulling the pink ones. You open it by pulling the blue ones. Now, if you were to use the same color drawstring, but you indicated the opening and the closing drawstrings with different types of beads, you would be making this bag even more magical because you would not be able to tell which drawstring is doing what. Thank you so very much for watching this project. I hope you will try and make it. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.